we 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 had stopped uh, um you know with a few um uh, you know sharing and i think beth has put up uh, um you know a good example she's she's written going with wisdom of the world has led a friend who has had trouble with a husband to have an affair as punishment to her husband absolutely yeah so it's done out of jealousy or it's done out of retaliation that shows the wisdom of the world thank you thank you beth that was uh, that was a good example yes charles uh, are you there Yes, I am. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you had the post the question of a child or children coming home and telling you that so and so has hurt them. Yes. Um, I, from a life example, um, some of the children that come to me, yes, I've had them series of them some are 19 20 and they have those who think hate them they say so and so is hating me then i tell i ask them uh what is the situation now are they doing it out of jealousy is that person hating you because of excellence in class or because you have better friends so i first establish the reason as to why there is that hurting and when the my child tells me then i'm able to to guide them but usually i use uh the the word of god because i remember even it was not a, a distant person but the 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 two children uh the first the the boy was fighting with the girl and they fought and after fighting then the 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 girl came running to me daddy daddy uh someone uh, this one has fought me has beaten me then i said you go and hit back I go and hit back but as but as she was going back she was hesitant then the sister saw her and said what has that told you to do that i should go and hit back then mm -hmm. The other girl said, come on, what does Roman children want to say? That they do not return evil to evil. Because we had heard that one, and uh, mm -hmm. she was like, okay, now I'm going to forgive him. Let me forgive him. So it depends on the, I first establish the condition that my child is talking through because it might be their cause as to why the the coming of hatred is coming mm -hmm. or else it is satanic so i first establish and then i'm able to guide thank you so much thank you charles thank you so much okay so that was wonderful okay good so we've got a couple of examples on how to use the wisdom of god and the wisdom of the world uh, how do we differentiate between that Okay, so we'll move on to our um, uh, to the next four steps of how we resolve conflicts. And as I did mention, the first three steps are what we do at an individual level in, in within our own hearts and getting right with God and preparing ourselves to love and to forgive and uh, to uh, and also seeking the wisdom to deal with the situation the next four is where we we see that it has to be done in uh in step with the person who we are having the conflict okay now from here on definitely are the most difficult steps it's easy to go to god and to share um and to and to you know be uh, to to experience his love and his kindness but to go on in action to do what he wants us to do would probably be the more challenging step okay but nevertheless it is something that it 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 requires to be done so even scripture talks of it of how now maybe someone can read this and i'm on page um, 118 if you can read proverbs 27 5 to 6 proverbs 27 5 to 6 Proverbs 27, 5 to 6. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, 
but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful amen amen thank you so it is it's a place where we are we we um come to a place of speaking whatever the truth of of what we know or what we understand that's what we need to do and that too in love speaking the truth in love as it says in ephesians 4:15 so even as we are uh, th th this this step is an extremely practical one and something um, you know i'm sure a lot of us would have done if we've been into management <clears throat> or any kind of humanitarian studies you would have seen this problem solving approach how do you resolve a problem and some of this these steps are taken <clears throat> from from those principles and those that that understanding so in order to discuss a matter certain things that we need to keep in mind is uh, it is important like you know you set an appointment when i mean by appointment it's you're setting a place and a time where either of uh, when both the partners are uh, uh, aware that there is going to be this kind of a discussion it shouldn't be done at a time when you know someone's working or you know there there is they are facing another challenge and then you've just called out and say you know let's uh, work through this but here it is finding a time and a place to be able to deal with it so finding a place and a time having an appointed space to do that is is important the other thing that you keep in mind is that you address an issue at a time or address the issue uh, at hand that needs to be discussed rather than bringing out all of the previous concerns and problems all into um you know one one whole lot but the present issue addressing addressing that is something that needs to be done also being willing to uh, uh to uh, allow for a for an expression of thoughts and of feelings from both parties so uh, you know giving the person one person time to speak and uh, you know address what they may be seeing as the issue and allowing the other person to do so is is important and as that is happening as we learnt in our communication to be patient enough to listen and not Uh, come to a place of judging or come to a place of finding out the right answer so you're allowing the person to talk and uh, and then taking on you know doing the feedback system is the is one of the best ways to work uh, uh, this out so something that you know what i do in my sessions is especially when they find it difficult to really talk to each other i give them i hand them a book and i said you know once you finish talking you hand over the book to the other so that it's like okay i've done my talking and now you can you can go ahead so it gives everyone the space and the time and the emotions to to come to a place of ex uh, expressions okay and this is also uh, needed uh, the intent intent of discussing this is not to prove one right or the other wrong but it is with an intent of understanding the other and coming together to form a solution that uh, that is peaceful so through that as you're doing as you come with this intent uh, you keep aside every form of criticism every form of judgment any kind of a blaming or um, anything that is that can uh, digress you from from the intent of the conversation okay and also ensuring that you keep to the topic keep to the conversation in all honesty and understanding okay so there are certain practical steps that is there uh, it's laid out for you on page 118 and 119 and we'll just uh, you know quickly go through each one of them so the first thing is yes you identify what is the specific issue that you want to resolve uh if it, it, it's probably calling it out and saying you know the something i want to discuss about is something that happened last night or last evening or the trend that i'm seeing that uh, for example you you are um, um you know maybe uh, every time you make uh, the decisions that you make you may need to uh, talk to your parents so so maybe i'll take an example so let's say the problem here is an interference from from the parents okay so the first step is you identify the issue and you say okay the specific issue i want to resolve is the way that 
your parents seem to be um, you know, overly involved in the decisions that we need to make. That's the that's the issue you're bringing out for discussion. Okay. The second point is uh, to decide if this issue is worth discussing. So you're you're really going to look at how big is this issue, and uh, uh, you know what is the intention or, as you are doing it. So if it is not to understand and to come to a place of resolution, but it is a place to blame or to place uh, any kind of a guilt, then we know that we are at the wrong. Uh, we're at the wrong time to do it. it. It should be at a place of understanding and a place of bringing about a resolution rather than to blame. So uh, figure that out. Is this issue worth discussing here with the intent that you've come for? Okay. The third thing you do is, um, yes, uh, finding out, a, picking up a good time to, to talk uh, so that this can be discussed. Now, then the fourth point that's written here is getting focused before you talk. And here is where that you have taken the time to understand your own perceptions and feelings and thoughts about the situation before you can relate it to the other person. Okay, so this is something that should have done. You know, you you're you are um, focusing on what is it that really you're feeling and you want to express and um, you know, partitioning it or, or, or moving away that which could be ineffective for the conversation. The next is, yes, you start the conversation, start the discussion with finding out what, oh, I mean, sorry, with highlighting what are some of the positives that you have found. So maybe something that you can say, you know, something positive that I see uh, with your parents is that they are, um, you know, they are keen to help us and they are, um, uh, you know, they're always ready to support, uh, support us in any way. So looking at certain positives before you can actually deal with the concern that you may be going through. OK, so starting the discussion with certain positives of it. Now, let's say if it is a certain it is a behavior pattern of your spouse uh, saying something positive about the, uh, the, 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 the other behaviors. You know, I do see that you do this well. I do appreciate that you, you know, you do this. I, I really am. Um, uh, I feel cared and loved when you do this. And then you go on to discussing, which is the sixth point, is discussing the problem with the issue. And this is where you state how you feel and what you think about the issue. So I think a key point that I want to bring out here is very often when we are trying to express our feelings, we do something that often uh, is in error, and that is uh, uh, you know, very practically starting our statements with you, you know, saying that you, you always listen to what your parents are saying. All right. Now, hearing that kind of a statement in itself sounds critical, sounds finger pointing. Okay. Instead, if you can change it into stating your feelings about it. Like it says in the book here, I feel angry or I feel sad or I feel sidelined when I see you taking our decisions to your parents. Right? Rather than saying, you always come back with a decision after you talk to your parents. Right? So here, there hasn't been. <clears throat> an onus taken here of what you are going through. And if we can change the way we speak, the tone and the words we use, we will find that the other person seems a lot more willing to engage in what you are going through rather than what he feels he's done wrong. All right. OK. So mo changing this, this um, uh, these words. So uh, observe yourself next time when you're trying to bring up a situation. What do you, I mean, it, it comes very naturally to us that, you know, without us even thinking, we probably start our sentences with, you know, you always do this, you never do this, you are doing this, you, you are here, you are late, you are, rather, if we were to discuss and talk about what we are going through, saying, I feel 
uh, rejected, I feel unloved, I feel uncared, I feel insignificant, I feel disappointed, I feel jealous, I feel uh, angry, I feel that helps in really putting things in perspective. So discuss the problem with the issue by stating how you feel and what you think about it. Okay. By doing so, you're also going to be specific uh, and give certain examples, right? And and uh, so you're actually actually corroborating what you what you are feeling. So in this example, uh, you know, you could say something like, um, um, you know, I want to bring to you what happened yesterday when we we discuss, you know, when when your parents came over and were talking about this decision. Right, it it helps them to understand it more clearly than by saying, you know, when your parents come here, always we have a fight. Right, it doesn't help. So be specific about the examples of the issue, and and if you were if you are to bring something up, it it really helps. And there, I think even when you're being specific, two things over here. Uh, you know, never get sidelined by the content of the conflict. So. In your mind, you probably are upset that your spouse is paying a lot more attention to his or her parents, right? That's what you may be uh, feeling or, or that's what's giving rise to the conflict. But when you make it as the content, saying that, you know, when we bring it up like this and say, you know, you made the decision to buy a new whatever, equipment by asking your parents. And it becomes the content. And then the partner says, no, but they, they've had this um, equipment or they've had this TV uh, for the last 10 years. So I'm sure they know better. Uh, and so then, you know, then, then comes the retort of saying, uh, but, you know, even I've had the TV, why couldn't you ask me? So then you see that how the conflict becomes more about the content rather than more about what a person may be feeling, the, the, uh, the hurt that is going. Whereas the spouse is attempting to say, hey, you know, I feel rejected when I'm not asked about a decision. So I would like, it doesn't matter what TV you buy or what you're doing, what, what, I, what I want to bring forth to you is that it hurts me when this situation happens when decisions are taken outside of me. It's not about the TV. It's not about the equipment. It's about this. So being careful that that the content and usually that happens when you start with you statements. It becomes the content. The conflict becomes the content and it is lost because one person doesn't uh, feel that they've been understood. The other person can't understand why this has become such a big issue, why a TV has become such a big issue. And you will often hear that, you know, we fight over small things. We fight about the TV or we fight about the food. But in actuality, the problem is a lot more deeper about maybe it's a sense of rejection or it's a sense of uh, invalidation. And that's what needs to be expressed. So when you discuss the issue, it's needed to give examples and state what you feel or what you think. OK, then the next thing uh, to be to be doing is to bring about some expectation. What is it that you want? As I'm discussing this and I'm saying, hey, I feel rejected when you take your decisions to your parents, I'm also going to be saying what I expect and say that, you know, it would make me feel loved or cared for if you would also involve me. Or it would make me feel loved and cared for if we could have a discussion first and then maybe take a viewpoint from your parents. It will help me feel much better. So it's not just that you're pointing out the struggle, but you're also sharing what your expectations are, what you would like uh, to see different, right? And here again, you've, you've brought about a feeling. You're not saying, you know, I, what I expect is you should be asking me too. So, you know, that's going to come out, uh, come quite starkly and you're going to get a defense saying, but, you know, you don't know about all of this. So why should I ask you? Right. So it, that's not the question or that's not the issue. The issue was that she feels rejected or she feels invalidated. So if you could express it that even your expectation, if you can express it by saying, you know, I, I uh, feel cared for when you take my views or you come in and check with me also before you could do that. Or I would like that you involve me in the decision as you're speaking to your parents so that I could also bring about my viewpoint because it makes me feel I'm important to you. 
Okay, so sharing this is very important. So not just sharing what you're feeling and you're thinking, giving an example, but also to be able to raise your expectations. And once this is done, both ways, this side, that side, okay, uh, bo on both sides uh, of the parties, then you come try to arrive at the solution where the two of you agree on certain things, okay? Where, so you may, you know, we say, okay, we've understood that this is a problem that you feel that my parents are are involved and that I may be, um, uh, you know, I may be coming off as someone who doesn't care. So then you answer that question, what do each of us really want or need? So the one person may be saying, hey, I want to be validated. I want to be, I want to feel that you care. And the other person, you know, understands that, okay, this is what you want from me and this is what you're expecting. And then you brainstorm some alternatives on how you could work through this and see if these eval uh, these uh, uh, alternatives, what, what could be the positives of it, what could be the negatives of it, and decide on what y'all both think as the best alternative. So, you know, in this situation, you may, you've identified the problem, you may brainstorm and say, okay, next time I want to make a decision. Um, you know, one of the things I can do is, yes, I will come and talk to you about it first before I talk to my parents. Or if that doesn't happen, the second is maybe I will talk to my parents and whatever they say, I won't make a decision on my own, but then I will come back to you and discuss it with you. Or third is, you know, I'm going to keep them away from discussing any of this. So it may be very many different alternatives that you come up with and, uh, you know, what to see what would be the best alternative that works for either the review and then of course you implement it and then to see that if you can review it now once having th this discussion like i mean it it flows like from point 1 to point 11 quite easily as i'm talking about it but it's it's not necessary that it can be that easy and uh, depending on the situation it may not be that um, that easy either and it may be required that you take help um, if you need, you know, the help of a, a mediator or the help of a pastor or a counselor that can help to bring about some of these dis uh, decisions. And it's perfectly fine to take um, uh, assistance or help. Um, and, you know, it's it's something for, for the betterment of the, of the family and the marriage. So that's the first. How do you lovingly discuss and address the matter? Now, this is completely practical in itself. Um, quickly, uh, two minutes. Is there any question before I move to the uh, next point? Uh, are we all here? The spin drop silence. Is everyone here following yes, me? Yeah. We are yeah. Here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. All right. So we move to the fifth one. The fifth point is resolving the matter in peace. Okay. So um, uh, even as we come to, uh, you know, discussing the matter, um, one of the things that we should have in our minds is that uh, any any of our relationship with people, be it our spouse, be it our colleagues, our friends, our church members, our children, will affect the way that we relate to God. Okay, because our relationship with people, the way that we relate to people, if we are not walking in love, if we are not walking in right in the right spirit, this is going to impact our walk with God. Okay, So walking in love and forgiveness and peace is important for us because it affects our relationship with God. Okay, And one of the um, beatitudes in itself, you know, this is what you see even as Jesus uh, spoke about this on the Sermon of the Mount, you see that this is one of God's, Jesus's big, these, these beatitudes, one of which, which is blessed are the peacemakers. It is a value that God holds very dearly. It gives us a lifestyle. How are we, you and I, called to live? You know, what is our relationship, not just with him, but also with our brethren? So being 
a peacemaker is equivalent to being called a son of God. So in our relationships, we work towards becoming a peacemaker and also becoming a peacekeeper. Because when we do work towards peace, we do find that it strengthens the marriage. And what would this sometimes mean? It would mean to humble yourself, to accept your own faults, and even make certain changes to the way that you may be doing right. So even if you are not at fault, you know, there are, there are many times that, um, that we may be in situations that we've not really done anything uh, that has affected the, the, the problem or, or, or the issue. But even if it isn't your fault to go and make peace, and you will see that, you know, as um, uh, in, in the Sermon of the Mount, uh, that it, it talks uh, right after the Beatitudes, you know, Jesus brings about, uh, you know, what anger is, what adultery is, what lust is. And it also says about, about divorce, and he brings about retaliation. He says, uh, you know, if anyone wants to do, wants to, um, uh, you know, if anyone wants to sue you, you know, ensure that you make that peace. Or, you know, it, later on it talks about how you love your enemies. You know, you should love your neighbor. And uh, it, it, it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But he says, he says, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So if you look at the, uh, you know, the things that Jesus writes, it's all of even, even if you are not the one uh, uh, who are who is at fault? You need to bless, to love, to do good, to pray, uh, to be at peace. So do all that you can to humble yourself and to come to a place of peace, rather than insisting your way is being right. Okay, because doing right always brings peace. Like it says in Isaiah thirty-two seven seventeen, it says the work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. So when you do things right, and when you are working in peace, you bring about quietness and confidence. So even if you feel you're wronged, asking the Lord to give you the strength to let go and not hold to account that which is done against you, and doing everything to live in that peace. because. You know, even in uh, James 3.18 says that goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. So as you go about uh, making peace, you will reap that harvest of goodness, that harvest of joy and blessing over your life. So uh, and ensuring that you resolve a matter in peace. Okay. The sixth one is, of course, um, a very important part of resolving conflict, which is to extend uh, mercy and give mercy to. So uh, give or uh, and to receive forgiveness. So here, what uh, you know, as as we you know that the entirety of scripture um, or or, or of, of our Christian faith lies in in the in the forgiveness. All of us are here because we have received the forgiveness from God. And that's what makes us all um, in right standing with God, all because he's cut off the debt. He's cut off all what, what we should have deserved. Um, you know, the, the, the parable, uh, parable of the unmerciful servant, right? The Everything was cut off. The debt was completely struck off. But he did not extend the mercy he received to somebody else, to someone who wronged him. Okay, So we are called, and as part of our faith, it is necessary, it is mandatory, it is a command to uh, give forgiveness as well as to be able to receive forgiveness. Would someone, I'm on page um, 
121, would someone please read the verse Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14? Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Colossians 3, 12 to 14. You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourselves with compassion. Uh, Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Uh, Charles, Anita is reading. She started reading a verse. Yes. Thank you, Charles. Yes, Anita, go ahead. Humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another. Whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Yeah. So, you know, as it is in, in Scripture, you know, the verse, verse 13 that says, forgive one another. Um, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. So that's what we extend uh, also to come to a place of humility, which we spoke about in the last uh, last point where we resolve the matter in peace, coming to a place of acknowledging our wrongdoing, apologizing, coming to a place of asking for forgiveness, and being specific about what you are sorry for. You know, just not saying a sorry, but being able to express what you did and what you're sorry for and seeking that forgiveness. And as uh, someone has sought forgiveness, to be able to extend it also is, um, is also in a place of humility. That is, you're willing to let go of something that you felt you needed to hold on to. And asking for forgiveness should come from a place of sincerity and should not come from a place of a pretense. Okay, And once you forgive, uh, you're also, as you forgive, you're choosing not to hold any form of a bitterness or an anger or a resentment or any kind of an ill feeling. That's what you do when you have forgiven. You're choosing to even let go of the emotions that may accompany it. So to forgive is to be able to release those emotions that you're holding towards the other person. Okay, And um, as you have sought for forgiveness, as you've extended forgiveness, you also make the choice of not repeating the wrong. That shows repentance, you know, as, as it says in Proverbs 17, 9, it says, he who repeats a matter separates friends. So being mindful that a repetition of certain wrongs can can make it difficult, can make a, a, a situation or a restitution very difficult. So to not just as part of extending forgiveness, you make a choice also not to repeat that which was, was, was done. Also, not bringing up certain repetitions of what was done in the past, to be able to let go of that which was in the past. Okay. All right. I think there's a question. Uh, yes, Charles, go ahead. Charles, I think you have a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, about uh, that point number six of uh, giving and receiving forgiveness, there was an illustration of a man who decided to step on the slipper, a shoe, a slipper of another person and stepped as the person was moving, then the, the man stepped on the, on, the, on the slipper and the man could not go and even the one who was stepping was not going. And he used it on the point of forgiveness that if you do not forgive someone, you also, you can't move. You, you are in the same position. Even the one person you are still holding a grudge with, you, he will not move, you will also not move. So when you, you, you give uh, forgiveness, uh, you will be able to receive and motion will be in progress. You will be able to move a step forward. So that's what I wanted to, to talk about 
about to die for Christian. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. That's a lovely analogy. That's a, that's a nice one. Yeah, thank you, Charles. Yeah. So as as we do also um, extend and give forgiveness, we come to the last point of being able to release a blessing. Okay. Um, if when you look into scripture, uh, it's not just about releasing or forgiving, but also extending um, uh, a blessing. It is not just uh, letting somebody go off the hook, but to even bless them as they have asked for, for forgiveness. So if you look at scripture, Romans 12, verse 20, it says, uh, as the scripture says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. Thirsty, give them a drink, for by doing this, you will make them burn with shame. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. So it's not just that you're forgiving your enemies, but you are releasing a blessing into them, giving them something to eat or, you know, being kind to them or saying a good word in turn, right, is a way that you or you do release a blessing. Or in um, in First Pat First Peter verse nine, it says, "Do not First Peter three verse nine. Do not pay back evil with evil or cursing with cursing. Instead, pay back with a blessing, because a blessing is what God promised to give you when He called you." So even as you're going through this uh, this process of resolving a conflict, you this is a choice. It is a choice where you forgive, you um, let go of the past, and you release the blessing. You choose to release the blessing. Uh, and, and I think this also works in the way that we process certain of our thoughts. We are taking uh, that step and refusing to um, think about those thoughts of anger, retaliation, bitterness, resentment, you focus and you give it up and uh, instead release a blessing because of knowing that God in our state, in our sinful state, he not only forgive, forgive us, but gave us every spiritual blessing that, uh, uh, that, that he had. So we've become partakers of him, not just forgiveness, where he has given us eternity, but we are partakers of Christ in every spiritual blessing. Okay, so and in practicality, it is not just speaking words of blessing, but even thinking about blessing, thinking about the person who has hurt you, or whenever there is an, an, any kind of an unfair treatment that comes by. Uh, choosing not to bring this back to your mind, but casting those down, right? As it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, cast down negative thoughts, you know, and you're, you're making a choice instead to make it in obedience to Christ Jesus. So reminding yourself that as you have released forgiveness, you will not entertain those negative, uh, bitter, bitter thoughts or negative feelings, but as God has instructed, you will speak a blessing. You will use your words to bless. You will use your words to build and to encourage. So do what you can to build and encourage and support your spouse through that. So we've come to that, those seven steps. The first three steps being that we do individually, the next four steps that is important that we do together. So the so what we discussed uh, in, in the second hour was how we lovingly discuss those matters with certain practical steps we've spoken about, making sure that we resolve it in peace, being able to extend forgiveness and also to release a blessing. Okay, um, a principle I think that we can, we should take even as we relate to very many people is to be a person who does his best to be a peacemaker and keeping strife or contention or anger outside of our lives. Okay, so um, you know, whenever if, if sometimes we do know 
that you know I, I, I can practically give you an example there may be certain things that you know that can create a strife uh, it could be very simple things maybe it's certain uh, um, you know certain uh, what's that word um, um, sorry I'm not getting the word but certain things that you may like like for example um, you know if you are a person who, who who's a neat freak or who likes things organized one thing outside of the shelf you know onto the next one could just uh, um, could bother you right and just a harsh word or uh, you know something that that you may say opens the door to strife okay so see how best is it that you can keep strife out of your life what are certain things that you can uh, you know not really pay attention to what are important things that you may need to pay attention to and keep those things that uh, aren't important out of uh, your your life of strife okay so follow god's word and try as best as possible to keep strife out of your life because in proverbs it all you know there are so many verses that says it is better to dwell with someone who is peaceful rather than have a house shared with a with a difficult woman or have an angry person or you know so keeping strife out of life uh, out of our lives should should be something that we hope to achieve at every time okay all right i think there's a question uh, Beth has written, forgiveness does not equate with trust. It is hard to continue in forgiveness when trust is broken time and again. How does one truly forgive if you cannot fully trust? Okay, that's a good question. We will be talking about this in our next, uh, in the chapters that are to come where we talk about releasing the past. Now, trust is not just something uh, that that is given it also has to be earned so in a relationship uh, that is a principle you can give trust but you also need to earn trust so when trust is not there it becomes hard to forgive it becomes hard to be in a place of forgiveness or when there are repeated errors that come uh, without um, without any hope of change it can be hard to forgive okay yet we are called there is a command that we are called to forgive even if we may not be able to trust so i think uh, an example that i can give you is um let's say uh, a spouse having a uh, an unfaithful partner a faithful husband or an unfaithful wife um you know is called to forgive but to be able to trust back in that relationship will require a reconciliation uh, will require the presence and the active participation and will of the other individual okay so forgiveness is something does that may not have any parameters we are called to forgive no matter what but to trust is something that is a two-way um, concept is something that you need to have from the other as well all right so yes you're right that forgiveness does not equate with trust forgiveness is one trust is the other we are called to forgive even though we are we may not be in a place we can trust the person back to allow them back into um, you know our situations or or whatever the case may be i hope i answered that beth uh okay is there anyone else with any question any feedback if not uh, we can you know i'd like one of us to pray um and uh, uh, also, I think when we're praying, we will just remember. I'm all of us are in some relationship or the other, right? It can be with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, with a sibling. And uh, I trust and hope and pray that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us 
um, even as you know this this chapter is one that comes back to me every time um, you know when when you are called by God to do something I always go back and say Lord is there anyone that I have to extend forgiveness to am I harboring anything inside because unforgiveness um, is a place where our prayers will not be answered you know there's a scripture on that I'm sorry I'm not able to remember what the scripture is but unforgiveness uh, if we un we do not forgive it hinders our prayers right so um, even as we pray let's open and pray for for our relationships all of us here that we will be obedient to God's word and come to a place of living in peace, resolving our conflicts, and coming right with God. Would uh, one or two of you please close with a word of prayer? Anybody? Shall I pray? Yes, Dinesh, please go ahead. God Almighty, uh, thank you for uh, uh, giving me all of a chance for uh, learning, uh, preparing ourselves for the sickness. Uh, for the uh, parent for uh, human uh, or a husband uh, yeah, if uh, yeah, in a chair uh, thank you for uh, giving us chance to learn more about uh, cause love cause forgiveness, uh, forgiveness uh, to me uh, to all of them, uh, thank you, Father, for uh, teaching, teaching uh, through uh, Tina Pastor. Uh, bless her, uh, give her words, uh, wisdom, uh, on knowledge to transfer uh, uh, us. Uh, he might uh, me might. Be uh, made perfect uh, on God's vision. Uh, let us me make uh, bus, uh, my uh, perfect uh, Lord uh, on forgiveness. Um, uh, even though he may make or he, he may uh, truly. Uh, my less uh, bless for you uh, truly uh, forgive or uh, uh, or sins all of your sins unknowingly knowingly you will you will so that may have done uh, the thanks or uh, demanding uh, uh, us for a uh, repentance uh, uh, or um, and um, uh, forgive us uh, and thank you for uh, reminding us uh, the, the, thank you for uh, uh, this opportunity to learn uh, the God's love God's um, wisdom uh, more more uh, get to know. Uh, I pray uh, today uh, attendant student may or he wisdom and knowledge uh, he bring forth uh, open eye uh, our eyes spiritual eye spirit, uh, physical eye uh, bless us bless us bless us uh, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask. Um, uh, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Father God, I just come to you, Lord, with every relationship that we represent, Lord. Each one of us 
are in many relationships, Father. Lord, we bring all of this to your throne of grace. Father, we pray that you will help us apply what we have learned today. Lord, that we will become right with you. Lord, that we will confess our wrongdoing before you, Father. That we will be empowered by your love and by your forgiveness. That you will give us the wisdom to resolve situations that may be in long conflicts. Father, I pray that you will permit the other person willing to discuss and talk and lovingly bring forth the matter, Lord, of conflict. And I pray, Father, that you will release your blessing over these relationships, that it will be fruitful, that it will be more loving and peaceful, Father, that each relationship that we represent, Lord, will, will show forth your glory because we desire and we are designed, Lord, by you as believers to, to live a life of peace, to live a life without strife, Father. Lord, I come um, uh, against any attack of the enemy over our relationships. If there is significant strife and discord in any of our homes, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, that your merciful love and the power of the Holy Spirit will empower us to bring these situations to your feet and seek, God, your kindness and your forgiveness as we resolve these conflicts. Be with each student here, Father. Meet with them at their points of need. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. A quick announcement. Uh, there, uh, the um, marks up, uh, sorry, the exam, the assessment is put up, the graded assessment one is put up. Uh, please ensure that you do your assessment before the 29th of September. The students who are uh, online students, before the 29th of September, please um, attempt it. They're very simple. The, your, your classmates who've done it have scored very well and beautifully well and excellent work for all those who've done it. So please ensure that you do it. This counts for your, uh, uh, your final exams, final marks. All right. Thank you very much. Have a blessed week and I look forward to meeting with you all again next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.